Everything Sequel is brought to you by Slater's 5050 and the Vegas Beer Guys. The Everything Sequel podcast contains explicit language, and I will not go to my room. I like to think I know something about beer, but nowadays even I get overwhelmed when confronted by the exhaustive selection of craft beers they have at bars, breweries, and even grocery stores. Back in the day you had one, maybe two craft beers to choose from, and if you were confused, you ordered a Guinness. But in beer stations like San Diego, the craft beer options lately are in double, sometimes even triple, digits. So what's a beer drinker to do? You need what I need, the Vegas Beer Guys. Your beer of choice should be a perfect blend of malt and hops. And so a live show about beer needs that same balance. And the Vegas Beer Guys matches beer expert Dan Aker with self-proclaimed beer novice Stephen J. Weiss. The results are eminently drinkable. They're on Facebook. They're on Instagram. They'll try new beers. They'll tell you about beer. Think of them as your beer sherpas guiding you up a foamy-headed mountain to reach the peak of your pint. God, I need a beer. Hello and welcome to the Everything Sequel Podcast. This is the Pitch a Sequel edition to the Psycho Series. My name is Michael Schantz. I am from the How Dare You Awards. With me is the badass Brit, the man we all know and love, Tom Stewart of Lonesome Whistle Productions. Say hi, Tom. Blood! Oh, God, you know the rest. (laughs) If you don't know by now, you never will. Exactly. You're, You're... Listening to this, having never watched a single one of those sequels. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to it. We are here to pitch a sequel to the Psycho series. Mm-hmm. I was going to say this is not an easy task, but they left us an open window. So that might give you an idea where I'm thinking of going. Me too. Yeah, I think... I think... Uh... There's a lot of unexplored material in that timeline we can exploit. Nice. What? what, So let's. You want to just hop into it? What was your idea? Okay. Yeah, I'll hop. I'll. I'll. uh, Let's do it. Um. So the name of my sequel is. Oh God. (laughs) Psych Zero. Uh. So I've changed the O into a zero. Oh, I get it. I understand. Now, are, are, I don't know how we're going to represent that visually. I, I was just going to ask, are you going to have a slash through it? To, so <laughs> well, people I'll let, know mar- that I'll it's let a zero? marketing deal with that, okay? Uh, so, okay. That's mar- a marketing problem. <laughs> um, I am fascinated more than anything by your ability to continually fuck with numbers inside of titles. Well, I, you know, I, I sort of, I think it is, a, it is um, un, an underused convention in titling. <laughs> you know, there's the big hitters, Sesevenen, Numthrias, um, using the two uh, when something is two, using the digit two instead of the letter two. <laughs> you know, I think I think I, I think there's new ground to be broken here. Anyway, um, I think so it's been broken. Psych Zero is set in between Psycho and Psycho Two. Oh, interesting. In the twenty years. That Norman Bates is institutionalized. Um, it begins with a montage of uh, doctors. Well, hang on, I'm going to I'm going to stop you right there because, for <laughs> starters, what I find most interesting is that this is a prequel, but only a prequel to the sequels. Right. Yes. I find that rather delicious. So, okay, go. Well, go. don't. I mean, don't make too many assumptions. You don't know where this movie's going to go okay. next. <laughs> okay. Go on. Go on. Remember, we have the full. We have. We are not limited by it. the availability of actors by history. Right. We can. We can pick any any moment in time. We. You yeah. know. All right. So yeah. So we're montage of doctors and psychiatrists trying to cure, or at least break through um, Norman Bates's mother persona. Well, presumably and... you would. Presumably you would. This would be taking place 
Oh, no, maybe it wouldn't. I was going to say in the 80s, so it, it legally has to have a montage, but I suppose it could be any time in between those 22 years. Well, my idea was that, that we would, that the movie would start at the end of like, uh, maybe like a few weeks after he's committed. Oh, so good sometime times. in 1960, 61. I love that. And the, mon the montage would take us to around 1980. By, by which time the montage is is uh, mandatory by law. Yeah, exactly. All right. I, uh, I, <laughs> so, uh, but I love where your head's no, at. No, including the doctor in Psycho 4, uh, unsurprisingly, cannot cure this man. <laughs> right. So the, the doctors at the institution are left with the, the only remaining possibility that Norman is inhabited by the ghost of his mother. He's not schizophrenic at all. So this they is bring a, in this a, is a scientific psychologist. This is a scientific. This is a a doctoral. Um, I don't even know how to frame it. This this is based on science. <laughs> is that what? You... Uh, up to this point, it's based on science. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Clearly, what he has is his mom's ghost inside of him. Well, that's it, and you know, there's a and in Psycho Three when when the 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 mother corpse points at her attacker mm -hmm. um uh that you know that that's what i'm i'm uh, you know we're we're we're, pr we're foreshadowing that um okay so so they figure out norman's inhabited by the ghost of his mother they bring in a parapsychologist to talk directly to mother and it turns out um that what mrs bates wants is to give a confession so she can absolve herself of, of crimes that she's committed and pass into the afterlife. And then she agrees to leave Norman alone. Okay? <laughs> then she agrees to, to leave Norman's body. So obviously the staff at the institution agree, this parapsychologist. Oh, they have to then agree. We, yeah, then they go, wow, they may have agreed too soon. <laughs> Through flashback, we see that uh, Mrs. Bates and her sister, who is really Norman's mother, but we make no reference to that because that revelation comes out later in the timeline. Of course. Um, were a serial killing double act of sisters in their youth and are responsible for dozens of murders in their local area. Holy shit. Yeah. And so after they get this confession, the... Um, uh, uh, Robert Lozier, playing who is now <laughs> Norman's psychiatrist, takes this to the local police. The uh, in, wherever Norman, you know, wherever the base. In order are. to help Norman. Sorry. In order to help Norman. In order, you know, it's part of the deal. Mother leaves Norman's body if, um, you know, she makes a confession. Okay. And it's given to the police. I don't quite know how the the afterlife um, uh, legal system amazing. works, but presumably, <laughs> when she gives it to the police, she can leave. A paranormal okay? confession. A paranormal confession. Oh, it's fucking great. And then, uh, but they take it to the police, and they're like, "Guys, or oh, sorry, guy, Robert Lozier, <laughs> Robert Lozier, Doctor Mafia. These are dozens of murders. There's so many people behind bars for these murders." If we bring this confession in, we're going to have to do, you know, endless retrials. We're going to bankrupt our, um, you know, our public money. We're, we're going to, you know, it, it's going to kill off the legal system in this area. So they said, let's just keep this quiet. And and uh, Norman's doctor's like, you know, I'm not his lawyer, but I'm going to have to ask for something in return. <laughs> oh, of course. You know, I'm, I'm a more credible lawyer. I look like I'm a lawyer. But I'm actually a psychiatrist. Uh, but I'll act as Norman's re uh, power of attorney in this point and say, you've got to give Norman something here because, you know, he's gone through all this. And it's like, okay. Yeah, poor um, guy. It, we'll, uh, we'll free him. We'll send him back out into the world. Man, that guy gets freed so often. But that's how it happened. We never find, we, we you know. But you find out. Based I on get the it. Fact that he's yeah. sane because he's not sane when he leaves. The, the institution at all um he's not sane but they pretend he is and the, the movie ends with him walking into the courtroom that you um, see at the beginning of psycho 2 psycho 2 oh, the, the, the hearing that begins psycho 2 and we see vera miles go in sit in her seat and you know the judge bangs his gavel and then the movie's over fuck yeah i'm on board yeah this is your best sequel 
I think. Def- oh, by by a long way. To date. It's fucking oh. awesome. I don't even want to speak. <laughs> I'm embarrassed no, to come up with my idea now. No, go ahead. So, okay. I, I had a bit of an evolution for my pitch a sequel for the Psycho series because, like you, my first thought was to go prequel. Yes. Uh, I couldn't decide if it was prequel to the first movie or, like you, prequel to the sequels. Pre-sequel. Pre-sequel. It did occur to me, but then I had this nagging notion of fucking Psycho 4, (laughs) which essentially ended Norman Bates' story, right? Or did it? Well, that's the thing, because... They burn the house down. He hugs his wife. The wife now, I guess, is, okay, I'm going to have your baby because you're not trying to kill me anymore. You seem to have gathered your senses. You've been fine for like three minutes. We're good. Yeah, exactly. Which is the most we could ask for, Norman. And it's like the strings come up and da-da-da. And they hug each other. And they built this moment where it's sort of, it, it sort of ended Norman Bates's story, right? Yeah, they burned down the house, which is always a clear indicator they want the franchise to end. To 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 be done, right? Yeah. yeah. Credits roll, and of course, at the end of the credits, you hear, meh, 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 and you're like, oh, for fuck's sake! Well, what have you done? What have you done to us? So, my idea, based solely on what Psycho Four did, yeah, was positing into the future. Now, how do you feel about this? Because the only problem with it is Anthony Perkins in real life died. Oh, that does that doesn't matter for our purposes. Uh, can we, can I still imagine that it's Anthony Perkins if we waited eighteen years? You do whatever you want. Good, because I want his child to be eighteen years old. Mm-hmm. I like it. And. Norman, as an old man, starts seeing a little, you know, a wearing eye towards towards women. Mm-hmm. And I was I I had the notion that he's a widower. The wife mm-hmm. has died, not yeah. by his own hand. Rocky Balboa, carry on. Rocky Balboa, exactly right. <laughs> and <laughs> but what ends up happening is this idea of the son has Exactly what Norman feared, the bad seed inside of him. Yeah. He's going to start killing. Norman essentially becomes the mother. Hmm. Son kills him, stuffs him, hears Norman's voice. We begin anew. Hmm. Is that the end of the movie when we begin anew? Yeah, essentially. Like, there's... (laughs) So there's... Back and forth, there's... Norman um, worried about his son. Mm -hmm. Then there's Norman investigating his son. Then there's Norman covering up for his son. Yes. Because it's his son. He wants to keep him safe. And so you have this climactic moment of son kind of versus father. What do we do in this moment? I'll tell you what we do. I put a knife in your head. (laughs) <laughs> and whoa who gets cu- so who gets knifed norman oh and then he becomes the cor- uh, becomes a corpse he becomes the corpse S- stuffed cor- stuff norman right yeah and mm, stuffed norman stuffed nor mm, stuffed norman <laughs> do you imagine so- uh um no he's probably well, well it doesn't matter do you imagine henry thomas playing Norman's son in an uh, in an ode to him playing the young Norman. I didn't. <laughs> okay, I'm liking it more and more. Yeah, I have to admit. And you know what's funny is I think Henry Thomas is a solid actor, and I don't think his performance in Psycho 4 like I can't la- you can't lay everything that's wrong with Psycho 4 at Henry Thomas's feet. Absolutely not, no. 
But at the same time, I just felt like he was miscast, you know? Completely. He looks nothing like Anthony Perkins, and they've asked him to play an entirely different character. Right, exactly. So it's not going to work. So it's just, yeah, exactly. And, and you know... You know when you're reading a book and the book becomes a movie? Hey, slow down, slow down. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Easy with the books, Easy, buddy. come on. Let's, let's, re- let's think about our demographic here. <laughs> but y- when you're reading a book and you're picturing a character's face, it's yeah. somewhere in between you can picture it clearly and it's shifting in your mind you know what i mean i know exactly what you mean uh i'm i'm thinking of something very specific which is uh in um the godfather franchise um when we get the godfather 2 flashbacks uh clemenza played by richard castellano the younger version is played by bruno kirby right and then in a sitcom that richard castellano was later in uh, Bruno Kirby was cast as Richard Castellano's son. Right. <laughs> that's great. So that's what I'm thinking of. But you're right. It's it's uh, it's a terrible piece of uh, it's a terrible piece of casting. What I like about both our ideas, where I think both our ideas have really got legs, is that there's there's room um, for exciting new characters. We have my maverick parapsychologist. You could go to town on that. Right. Um, uh, and um, or it could just be Dennis Franz. Well, like, it would be great to totally bring him back. Gaslighting Norman, pretending to be the guy who owns the motel when he is, in fact, his psychologist. He and Robert Lozier says, let's fuck with him a little bit. I'll pretend to be the motel manager. You pretend to be a psychiatrist. See if he buys it. <laughs> I guarantee uh, you the audience won't. <laughs> no. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And then, of course, you have to wait for Psycho, too. But, um, you know. Dennis Franz, he gets his comeuppance for that for those shenanigans. Or maybe he was a couple, an undercover couple alone. Oh Called man, I hope Andy not. Andy Sipowitz. <laughs> and you know what? I if if he's not available, I I'll play I'll play his part. I've already got the majority of the looks. I'm only ten years younger than he was when he started NYPD Blue. Fuck yeah, <laughs> you'd be a great dirtbag. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, psych- are we going to call it Psycho Junior, or is that too on the nose? Um, I, I, I got to tell you, I, I love what you do with titles, but I'm a more traditional fella. I like Psycho Five. Psycho, <laughs> just... Psycho Five, the end of the beginning. Right. So you know. That, that's one of the things there there are rules uh in the world you know from the how dare you awards one of the awards is worst title mm-hmm. and there are rules <laughs> don't misspell anything uh-huh. if you have a colon it's probably not a good thing mm. so when you get into psycho for the beginning yeah you essentially have a colon it's not it, it Colons are are so prevalent now that it's not that you can't have one, but it doesn't bode well. You know what I no, mean? No, it, it definitely just doesn't, doesn't bode, well. bode well. I'm thinking of Quest for Peace, the Revenge. Right. We're in trouble as soon as the as soon as those two dots if appear. The, yeah, if the colon appears, you're like, oh, we might be in trouble. It, it's just it's there. There's there's a thing with titles where if you fuck up the title. You're signaling to your audience, don't come see this movie. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you think about Superman 4, you fuck up the title and then immediately fuck up the credits. What's left after that? Right. <laughs> and then and then it's not a quest for peace. <laughs> yeah, add, add that tidbit that it's not a quest for peace at all. Um does does changing a letter to a number count as misspelling? How does the How Dare You Awards deal with that quandary? Is that an automatic penalty? It's also... I don't know. It's S- one of those... Sevenen is a very well-regarded film. Exactly. So I was just going to say that that's sort of the example that proves against the rule. It's not that you can't do it and it can't work, but for most movies... 
I worry. Yeah, now, for a, the movies, a, add in a leprechaun and we're in trouble. Yeah, exactly. But it also depends on the movie. So the movies that you have been pitching for, <laughs> <laughs> it works just fine. Yeah, there's no no one's no one's expecting any any more than that. Because it, yeah, it's 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 exactly announcing the movie you should be seeing. Yeah, yeah. I think I think maybe Psych Zero is is a is a step too far, uh, because I think the only way that you'd be able to communicate that on a poster, say, is to have have Psych Zero, open parenthesis, zero the number, close parenthesis, <laughs> which is probably not going to go over well in the international market where you know they they don't speak English. You're certainly stepping into mud quickly <laughs> with that. Or just, you know, like an asterisk and then at the bottom of the, <laughs> of the poster. Oh, my goodness. Well, do you have anything else to add? Um, I feel like Psycho was so long ago. Um, no, I think, I think my pitch is, uh, ho- I mean, hopefully what you see what I've tried to do with my pitch, which... Uh, is it's to take all my irritations about the things they missed in the course of the sequels right. and put them into one final summative movie. Um, and that's why... See, but the thing about that is you still have that laugh at the end of Psycho 4. They they left an opening to yeah, go which, on further. Yeah, so they left, they left an opening. You took it. They left 20 so this is openings great. throughout the timeline that I took. Right. So this is great because what they could do is do your sequel first and then my sequel. Yeah. And then continue oh, they, on yeah, with the series. Unlike the actual Psycho sequels, these two movies don't contradict each other. Exactly. Hollywood, <laughs> are you listening? Get to work. <laughs> we All are, right. We are in a, you know, we, we are nothing if not canonically minded. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, you got to tell us, I, Tom, for this one, I don't know if they should be voting against these two sequels. So tell us, do you like Tom's sequel? Do you like Chance's sequel? Or do you think both sequels? Yeah. I may, maybe that's when, where to go. When we put the poll out there, we'll, we'll definitely we'll add an option for you to, to uh, uh, have both made. All right. Feel with, free to with, send with us. With mine first. <laughs> Based solely on the fact that it's a prequel. And and other factors. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> All right. You can also send us your ideas for a sequel. Talk to us on Facebook. Talk to us on Instagram or Twitter. Send us an email to everythingsequel at Gmail. Let us know what you think. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time for our... Re- uh, we'll be revealing our new movies. Say bye, Tom. Good enough. (laughs) (laughs) Take care, everybody. Look, people, we're living in strange times. We know that, don't we? Of course we do. People don't even know what to do with themselves. We're getting stir crazy. Well, get outside and get yourself some great food, I say. You need to go to Slater's 5050 and Point Loma's Liberty Station. It's time to treat yourself to booze, to beer, to burgers, and more. They have their full menu, people. Their full menu, I say. How many restaurants do you know that are doing that? Most places are doing a quarter of their menu, probably. Some might be doing a half. Maybe a few have got three quarters of a menu. But Slater's 5050 has their full menu, including their signature 5050 patty. It's half ground beef. It's half ground bacon. It's 100% delicious. What more can you possibly ask? Worried about social distancing? Well, it is in place, people. Tables are separated and the staff will always be seen wearing masks. You're out of excuses. Get off your keister and come on down to Liberty Station's own Slater's 5050. Indoor dining available. Outdoor dining available. Bring the family. Bring your dog. Come enjoy the normal again. Good day to you. I said good day. <laughs> <laughs>